Good morning, fish heads, and welcome to another spray session. This is a four-part spray session. This is going to be part one of four. And the reason I'm doing four is that I have a unique opportunity. I have a client of mine that has provided pictures of what they want done on specific baits. And as luck would have it, it's two and two and two and then two more. Today we're going to be concentrating on this particular fish. So uh, I've noticed that it's a fairly simple chartreuse with a little bit of black spatter on it and black eyes, a lot of pearl white in the cheeks and gill plate, white on the belly, looks like some pretty cool um, pectoral fins that we're going to do a little bit of shading on. And the two that he wanted these done on are two completely different baits. Obviously this is an Excalibur and this is I believe a bandit. As a matter of fact, I'm 100% that it's a bandit. So because they're different, they are going to be primed. I'm going to scuff them just a little bit. And I've done, I've done the Excaliburs for them before, the, the square bills. Uh, the last time I did this for a customer, I took the, I sanded down these for the purpose of this video. I don't think that we're going to need to do that because of what this particular one is. The black splatter can probably cover that. It's not going to affect any kind of swimmability. Otherwise, they, they wouldn't have put it on here to begin with. So we're just going to leave these alone. And I'm going to prime both of these. So let's go ahead and get started. And uh, let's make something cool today. I've got white loaded up in the chamber. It's an opaque. We're just going to do a quick coat here. And we want to make sure that it's completely covered. One of the reasons we want to have that happen is because, especially on this Excalibur, it's quite a bit darker. I don't know if you guys can hear that feathering that's happening in my airbrush. Generally that indicates that there's a little bit of a piece of paint that's clogged somewhere around here um, near the trigger. So at some point between the first set of lures we're doing and the second part of this spray session, it'll come out in four parts. So part one is going to be completely unique on this pattern. I'm going to do some deep cleaning here and I will most likely use some rubbing alcohol. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of pearl lime. It's a very light green. Just a few drops of that. I'm going to mix it with fluorescent yellow and pearl white. We want to make sure that we don't have any gunk that'll drop down into the airbrush chamber much heavier on the yellow than on the green. And normally when I'm doing this I just use the end of a paintbrush to mix that down and if you one of my favorites is a true chartreuse and fluorescent yellow and pearl lime is an excellent way to get that color. And we're going to soften it just a little bit though because it is pretty bold and it's not quite that green so we're going to add to that just a little bit of pearl white just to soften the intensity. You would think as much as I use this stuff that doesn't have time to build up and get hard, but apparently it does. Keep these colors out for you guys so that you can see. These are all Createx today. I find that I can generally do most of my basic pattern requests with Createx. Biggest question I get with Createx is how, uh, how do I keep it from clogging up my chamber? If I'm doing base coats, I'll blast it through there pretty quick. I'm usually somewhere between 35 and 45 PSI to lay on a base coat. 
might be a little bit much for some of you guys, but if you're not going to reduce it, I think that's a decent shade there. I think that that's going to speak to where we want our color to be. I would say that that's pretty much it. Good. Fluorescent yellow, pearl white, and pearl lime. And there's your, there's your match. And we have uh, a considerable amount of white on the belly. So we're gonna, I'm gonna run these up. I found that if I angle my paint when I'm laying it on the sides, it doesn't um, splatter as badly. Or I can kind of come at it 90 degree angle from the top down. Yeah, definitely. If you, if you can hear that, yeah. It's gonna need it's gonna need a good cleaning after we're done this one for sure. But I usually pull this from the bottom and spray towards the top of the lure. And that generally takes care of any type of splatter because basically the splatter is going away from the lure instead of down towards the bottom of the bait. So that's pretty much it for this one. I've got just a little bit left over in the chamber, which is fine. We can hit that. There we go. Clear, clear that out. Now it does look like there's very little black on this, so we won't need to do a complete black back on here. But there's a couple of different ways that we can attack this. So I've pulled out this. This is uh, an FX R Tools FX Mini 2. So I think that we can probably achieve some of this. We are going to use a true black on here. We're going to do a detail, wicked detail jet black. The other way, there's actually a few ways. So I'll go ahead and walk through how you could do this. You could use the end of a paintbrush just very lightly to kind of stipple that paint on. Especially some of the... Now you could also flick like that. Or, hang on, I see a little spot that, there we go, wasn't 100% covered. Um, or, you could probably do a little bit of the black splatter with your airbrush and a little bit of black in the chamber and just flick. Uh, some people take the top of the nozzle off like that to achieve it. I don't. Uh, I normally just leave that on and at a very low pressure between 8 and 15 just get lightly flick that back and it'll it'll do it for you or you could use something like a loofah and I do have a couple of loofahs laying around but um, I'm not going to demonstrate all of them only because I want consistency but I am going to show you what I'm talking about as far as the loofah is concerned we'll just go ahead and pull that out so you guys can see there's there's a number of ways that you can tackle this there we go and loof is something that I probably don't use hardly at all, if ever, because I've just got so many other, just a little piece of sponge. Could use a piece of sponge and just kind of stipple black paint on. Now, in order to give consistency to this, we are using Wicked Jet Black. Got that loaded in the chamber. We're going to pull our PSI way, way down. We're going to run it right around 10. Make sure we have good flow coming out. We do. And because we want to remain, even though they're different baits, he wants the same pattern, so we're going to remain consistent. We're going to do that by having these on the same helping hands together. And then we'll come back with this, do the same thing. And do the front of this. And that way you really remain consistent 
and you stay a little bit truer to consistency on two baits. That's why I always recommend if you have more than one of the same pattern to do, do it in a run. Do it at the same time so your paint shade is going to be consistent. What you're putting on afterwards is going to be more consistent when you're doing your actual pattern. And we are going to go back on this one just a little bit and do, there we go, that's a little better. Now on the sides, there's not a whole lot until you get towards the back and which is one of the reasons that on the back I have a larger piece of stencil that I used. So we kind of want to translate that over to the other side and that's where again on this particular pattern you can kind of get away with using the eyes, the, 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 these little eyes that come on the Excalibur, they just fade in. You won't even notice them. And you know, and I'm finding that it does a little bit less harm to the lure as well. Let's go ahead and flip that and do it this way. And then we have very little left to do on the sides. I'm just going to use one that I think kind of lines up to where I want it. I just had my eye on it. This right here. Set that down towards the middle. And then really all it becomes is almost like making sure you're coloring inside the lines if you were on a coloring book. We'll just do the same thing on the other side. We'll flip over our pattern, make sure it's not tacky and we're not going to have any excess stick to that. Let's come towards the middle and do it here and then just lightly stipple. And all I'm going to do is put my paintbrush in the chamber, flick off excess, and very lightly add just a little bit into the bait. And that's pretty much going to do it. Um, we got to put eyes on, which I'm going to use a Q-tip for both. And it's very simple because these are black eyes. At least in the photograph it kind of translates as black. We just want a little bit kind of get that randomness. There we go. And I think if I'm looking at this, I see a little bit more towards the eye here. So I think I'm going to add just a little bit more in stenciling just towards the top of this and get it around this eye. And I think we can achieve that with this little spot right here. Do the same thing on this side and then flip it. You know, I see patterns uh, every once in a while that look similar to this on, uh, on the big box store brands. Not 100% like this though. So I definitely am going to be turning over a unique lure, unique pattern to my client. I love doing that. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. We've got our stipple. We've got just enough in this to give a good match to this pattern. All right, let's load just a little bit of pearl white. And then I'm going to I'm going to coat this just to give it a little sheen, kind of replicate the scales with this Comart airbrush um, pearlescence. I use it straight by itself. Some people mix it into their paint colors. 
usually I'm doing it as a finish, almost as a pre-top coat. I really want to get that pearl on the belly. Replicate these, the pearlescence of scale. Just a quick over the top. Kind of soften that black just a little bit. And then we're going to add shake this up real good. This is really thin. It shoots well. It is full of glitter. You don't need a whole lot of it. Try and conserve what you have. Uh, I usually get these uh, eight, four to eight ounces at a time and um, it'll last for a little while. So, And this, this shoots really well. It's very thin. And there we have it. We've got our base, we've got our details, we've got just a little bit of pearl. A couple more things we want to do to this before we completely finish with it. Number one, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I was interested in maybe putting the pectoral fin on. This is a, a lighter shade in the photograph if you guys are looking at your thumbnail over in the corner. Um, I'm going to be using that detail black magenta because it is a good bit lighter and I think that it portrays the uh, the fin, the side fin, the pectoral fin a little bit better. But I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. And that's been cleaned out so the black is gone. We want to pull our pressure back down. I, I always raise the pressure up when I'm cleaning the chamber out as should you guys. I'm going to add just a couple of drops here don't need a whole lot. And again, the basic premise on putting in a fin is that you want to, number one, make sure it's coming out, but you want to work around the edge of the stencil. You don't want to fill in the center because inevitably what will happen is that if you fill in the center, it's going to be all one color and you really want just a little bit of depth in this fin. So if you guys can see what I've done on paper, I always give you guys something on paper so that you can clearly see what the heck I'm doing before I drop it down onto the bait. But you can definitely see and we might even do it a little bit lighter on the bait itself. But I think that that's really because this is such a simple bait and it's such a cool pattern to do. Just to add a little bit of pizzazz to it, we're going to go ahead and put these pectoral fins on. And I'm going to line it up with the, uh, with the lip, the edge of the lip. And that's usually a good way to mark and make it a little bit heavier on the top. And that's it. And just drop that on. And there we have it. Now we've got our pectoral fins. Looking good. Now we just need the eyes. And for the eyes, I'm just going to be going back to the jet black. And a little Q-tip not even really going to need to mess with a cup, although I do have an old one here. I can use the old one. I just didn't want to waste a new one on just this little bit for the eyes, but normally I try and roll the Q-tip back and forth just so that it loads evenly. doesn't look all lopsided. Now on this bandit, we already have the eyes in the right place, so really all we need to do there, once our Q-tip is loaded correctly. That seems like it is. Let's just steady your hand and drop the eye on just one, one drop and you've got it. Do the same thing on this side. One drop. Make sure that they're the same size. And there are your eyes. Now we don't have that gauge on the Excalibur because the eyes are in the back and they have kind of disappeared into our stenciling, which is what we wanted to happen. 
they're really not hurting anything staying there. They really are not. So then, on something like this, we just want to keep our hand in the same, all I'm doing here, if you can see, I'm putting my hand in one spot. My pinky is my, my stable, my stabilizer here. And I'm going to drop one eye down. And then move around and drop the other eye down. And I'm not lifting my hand up on purpose because I want to kind of use my hand as a guide to get those eyes right. And there we have it. Make sure you're real thorough when you check your bait out. Make sure your hands are clean when you're handling the bait. Uh, a lot of people just straight up use gloves. I use gloves when I'm cleaning the bait at the end after the clear coat is dry. Uh, and I definitely wipe down my bills before I put stuff on. I usually do that off camera, but I thought that it would probably be a good little addition to this tutorial since it's a fairly simple pattern that you guys see me actually doing that because I do do it. I do it on all of them. As long as you're making baits in-house, you want to make sure that you turn over the most professional looking bait that you can, including making sure that your tape is consistent. And there you have it, folks. There is that really cool bass pattern in a chartreuse. And then just to revisit this now, obviously, like I said, you had the eyes raised on the bandit, so it's easier to put down. And your bill and your nose is skinnier on this Excalibur. So just using your finger as an arc to, to keep it on the same point really is going to help you if you need to dab eyes on a bait like I did today. It's going to help put them in the right place for you. All right, coming down the home stretch on this lure. Simple pattern, cool pattern. I like to try and make sure you guys are seeing different patterns. Um, I've never been one to do the same pattern over and over and over again, although I have probably, if I have done more, it's been on craws only because that's my thing. Just like with Michael, his thing is bluegill patterns. So we all have our, our niche, as it were. But I try to make sure you guys are getting some different patterns. Keep it interesting. Give you guys fresh content. And there we have it. Last one coming down the home stretch. And if there have been any issues, now would be the time to check. So what I'll do, and I did it on the other one, which is where I had a little bit of tape backing issue, is I'll sit here for just 30 seconds or so and make sure that it doesn't drain off, that there's no blank spots. And if it is, I'll give it a quick dip again. And a lot of times just dipping it a second time before you've actually pulled the entire thing out seems to resolve the problem. So just a, a little helpful Jekyll tip. There we have it, folks. That is all the news that's fit to print. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope I've taught you guys a, a little something. I would love your comments on what bass that is. Um, it's definitely a cool one. So we'll see you next time. Part two of four is a goldfish.